Hi, Marilyn here with Cotton and Chocolate, and I want to welcome you in to our month one of Fair Isle. And I also want to introduce Lauren, who's also our teacher, actually. Um, so, but I want to get us going with month one, and it's, we're really excited to have you as part of this block of the month. So to get going, first of all, of course, you need your pattern, right? So here's your the front of your pattern and um, of course the cover so you have the picture. We don't have the quilt yet because we're making the quilt with you. How about that? So we have um, the pattern and what's really important here is your fabric requ requirements. So here we have month uh, fabric one through fabric 17th. So you gotta sort all that out, all right? And what I and Lauren really suggest is Get your fabric sorted by these photos and put them in baggies and label them the fabric norm numbers. How about that? Okay, so this is gonna keep you all straight, all organized. And sometimes you'll even have little pieces cut. So, you know, here's fabric That's one it. with some sections cut in here. Okay, so get your baggies however you want and sort all your fabrics with the numbers on them and then put them in your project box. The other thing that we really like doing is putting this in a three ring notebook with your um, page protectors, because that way you can take them out, put notes on them, put them in, keep them organized. All right, so just a suggestion. I mean, you know, this is your deal. You can do whatever you want, but I really suggest that you do that. I think it's a really good idea. It does okay? work. Okay, it does work. <laughs> All right, and then here's some of the rulers that you need. You don't need this for block month one, month one, but you are gonna need them eventually. All right, you will need them. Okay, mark my words. All right, and rotary cutter, a mat, and this is the corner beam that we're using for month one, right, Lauren? Yes. All right, okay, so. The first thing that I always suggest when we start a block of the month is check your seam allowance. Okay, you need a scant quarter inch. And even though we're oversizing our blocks and cutting them down, they still need to be pieced correctly. You need to cut correctly, you need to piece correctly. Scant quarter inch, and how do you know that you have one? Check your seams. So what I suggest is cutting three, just small little pieces, one and a half inches each, sew them together, press as you normally would, and that piece right in the middle should measure exactly one inch right on the top after you've pressed it. Not sort of one inch, exactly one inch. Now what happens if it doesn't? Okay, if it's too small, that means your seams on the back are too big. Okay, if it's too big, then your seams are too tiny and you have to adjust it. Adjust it either by moving your needle or if you're using a featherweight. I don't know what you do. She, she would know what to do. I don't <laughs> you know. just I don't shift where you have your fabric. You shift where <laughs> you have it. Is. There you go. Okay. So, but fix this and fix it every time that you maybe go get your sewing machine serviced or you've sewn a lot. I, I check it periodically. All right. So get a good seam allowance. Okay. Have a good iron at your station. I love these little Oliso irons. We sell them here, of course, in the shop. A little mini project iron. They are super hot. Don't touch them. Don't, well, yeah, don't lick them <laughs> or touch them, but they're really hot. And my wool pressing mat so that I get a really good press on my project. So have the right tools is the whole idea here. Have the right tools so that we can get going. So anyways, that's what we're gonna be doing. We have, and then once you make your blocks, because we're not gonna be piecing this all together at once, but once you make your blocks, so here's my month one already done. I know, how about that? And then here's month, month two. two. Woo -hoo -hoo, look at that, see something exciting. Put them in baggies and as month you go. Three. And look at this, month three, looking ahead. Isn't this exciting? So put them in box block, uh, baggies as you go so that you know where everything is and say, where did I put that? Well, that, now you know they're in baggies. Okay, so stay organized, have the right tools, and now we're gonna get ready to go and I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren for actual cutting of your three fabrics for this month. 
and piecing. So, Lauren, take it away. Well, hello. Okay. Thank you. I'll move out of the way. I, I appreciate it. And Marilyn's still going to be around. She's going to be assisting me. I am. I'm going to be around. I'm the... not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. So, we are going to work on month one of our block. We are going to be making the corner beam units. Um, and for that, we are going to need fabrics one, three, and 17. So these are our three fabrics for this month. The first thing I wanna do is go over the um, tool a little bit for you because there's gonna be some things that you're gonna need to use on the tool. For starters, you've got this solid line here, okay? This is your uh, side triangle trim um, line, okay? You're gonna need that when you make this, the units when we cut our fabric 17 and it's going to be our side triangles okay then we're also going to have use this center beam trim line one and center beam trim line two to make our triangles which will be our centers on the far right we're going to use to make that what i call a tie okay and we'll go through that and then this side of the unit we're going to be using when we do our final trim, okay? Because our seams will be here and here. And we'll go through all that also, okay? So for starters, we're going to grab, we're going to make our, do our first cuts for fabric 17, which is our background. Kind of hard to see the cuts in there. But... That's okay. I'll, we'll show them here on the map too, okay? So I'm gonna take my fabric 17. And what size strip do we cut? This strip, as we have in the fabric cutting instructions, fabric 17, we're gonna cut four five inch wide strips. We're also gonna be cutting um, five inch wide strips of fabrics one and three, and then sub cutting them into five inch squares. Okay? So the first thing I do is I will take a straight edge and I will I hate cutting when I'm sitting down because I can't see anything properly so I'm gonna cut off so I have my fabric now I've got my fabric folded because you're gonna have both sides that you can use I'm gonna take cut that the first side so it's I'm right-handed so I cut it that way then I'm gonna use my side triangle trim one, okay? So I'm gonna line up my trim so that my solid line is right on the edge of the fabric and the base of mine is right around that four inch finished unit because the unit, once it's trimmed, will be four inches. And this also shows down here, it says cut strips five inches, which is nice because it automatically on the tool tells me to cut it at five inches. So I will place this here, take my rotary cutter with a sharp blade, and make my first cut. There is my first side triangle. And then can I take this and I'll show you what it looks like. And it matches that piece right there. How about that? Okay. What do you know? I love that. Okay. Now, I I'll love Deb's Tucker's back. tools because she builds everything into the tools. At the other end of here, now I've marked this with a little bit of glow tape so that I know where I'm looking. It says second trim, and that's this tape here. I'll, let's see if we can get that without a glare. It says second trim right here. Let me show it, turn it around so you can, Jerry can show it. It says second trim right there. Mm -hmm. So I will now take this, and I'm going to do oh, my nice. second trim. Yes. I'm going to flip it. My oh. second trim is going to be base down here, and then this angle, which is side triangle trim two, is gonna, I'm gonna line that up. So our first one is here, mm -hmm. and our second one is almost sideways from the first one. Exactly. Okay. And so then I'm gonna trim mine piece there. So I now have two sets here, okay? And if you flip them over, what do you know? They're identical. Very nice. Huh. 
So I'm gonna put these aside for the moment. I had a five inch block cut. Oh well, I'll cut another five inch block. So I'm gonna take, this is fabric one. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to do the, um, make the, the corner beam, which is, it actually starts in the center of a, of a, a corner and it beams out like a nice big bright light. So think of it, I always think of it as those big movie theater lights mm -hmm. and they beam up in the sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this is doing and it's going out to a corner. So I'm gonna take this, trim off my edge because I don't like those guys because they're never even. And then, oops, I should have closed my blade. Marilyn's here, she's gonna get mad at me. <laughs> so I will- Are you take, cutting two? I'm cutting two because I can always turn it around. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? So I'm just gonna take one of these units right now as my fabric. This is fabric one. I'm gonna do the same thing for fabric three. I'm gonna cut mm -hmm. my five inch blocks mm -hmm. or five inch squares. As stated here, we need 16 of fabric one, five inch squares and 24 cut of the fabric mm -hmm. three. So then when we go to cut the, the beam portion of the block, we are going to use um, in here, the center beam number one, which is this dotted line. And then we're gonna use the center beam trim two, which is this dot dash line, mm -hmm. okay? So for my first cut, I'm gonna use the center beam, this dotted line, which is the center beam trim one. I'm gonna bring this all the way up to the corner and have my dotted line. And what do you know, it falls into that, that same, line down here where it's the four inch finished, cut strips and squares five inches. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut that. This goes away. This literally goes away. And you don't, you don't need that. that. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna go and use my center beam trim two. Okay. And like I said earlier, it's, I call it a tie. I know it's hard to see. I see it. Um, and then I'm gonna line up that dotted dash line Again, I'm gonna bring the point right up to the edge and do my dotted dash against the line that I just cut. And I'm going mm -hmm. to trim here. And Those again, this goes away. So that's this one right here then. That's the sample. This that is square, yes. and that's turning into here. Yes. And you do it for both of those fabrics. For both of those. For all and of those. How many do you do of this color? You do you do sixteen, 16 of the of fabric one, one and, and twenty-four of the So of you'll get fabric. really good at this. You'll get really good. Okay, but mm. you can cut more than one at a time. You can. Okay. I wouldn't cut a whole lot more. Okay. But you because if they shift okay. you but don't maybe want two to, at a you time. might be able to cut two at a time. Okay. Um, so once we've done that, then we can take our units that we cut for our triangles and these guys, because we cut them in pairs, they're reversed. Mm -hmm. So voila, I now have two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now with batiks, it's hard to tell what side's right and wrong. So That's there's right. no right and wrong. There, there is right. really isn't. Okay. So you'll want to set this up so that you actually kind of create a square. Okay. Because you can kind of see when you put these together, they're kind of, mm -hmm. they'll make a square. Mm -hmm. The one thing you don't want to do is mm, that. That looks pretty wonky. Okay. <laughs> but it can be done. It looks okay. like Superman. You oh, probably, have we got a vagina ass on that? We probably <laughs> will do that accidentally. We probably will. Trust me, okay. it does happen. That was a no. So This is a yes. You'll want to do it, line it up this way. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now what I've gone ahead and done is, as we go to sew these, I have pulled together. Ah, I gotta get to the right. 
get Jerry in the right position. Okay. Of course, this is on a dark table. That's all so. right. I can see. So I have taken this first one. Mm -hmm. Let me grab this. This was originally here. I flipped it over. Yep. Okay. Now, when I do that, I want to start sewing up at the top. Okay. But as you notice, I have a little bit of that brown at the top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a little bit of the white at the bottom. Okay. So you want it just offset a little okay. bit. Like, is it a couple threads? No, it's almost like when at the bottom, you're close to that quarter like an, inch. An eighth of an inch yeah. maybe sticking out? Yeah, you can get it down a little closer mm -hmm. and have it be close to a quarter. Mm -hmm. So when you sew it, you want to start at the top, okay? And sew straight down. Okay. Okay. With the white on top. With the white on Background top. Background on top. So now I'm going to show you how to press this because... One thing you don't want to do when you're doing with Deb Tuckers and you're pressing, you don't want to use a heavy hand. It, you want it to be light. You don't want to use it and press that seam because it will cause it to wave. So first thing I do is I take my seam, take my unit, I set the seam, turn it over, and I run my iron just to the edge of it and slightly pull this over and, and just press it out. I'm not pushing at it. I'm just lightly pressing my unit down. Good. Okay. So now I have, actually, because Marilyn's getting the demo kit, mm -hmm. she now has two of these units done. Keep going. <laughs> you, got, um, you got 16 more to go. You got lots of these to <laughs> So when it comes time to getting the second unit done and put it on the other side, okay, because this is what it would have been, you flip it over and you're going to set your you're gonna start at this end now, and you can bring it down a little more. You wanna be somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. And then you sew all the way up. Yep. Okay? And then once you've finished doing that, again, you'll bring it back over, you'll press it out. Just gently, see I'm not doing anything, I'm just holding it in place. And just, let it press out so it's nice and pretty. Very pretty. Very pretty, pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, once you've made all of your blocks this way, now it's time to trim. So here's one that's trimmed. So you'll see that the size is a little different. Mm -hmm. So this is trimmed. We'll have trimmed this one and we'll also trim the, the purple one mm -hmm. the same way. Okay. I don't have that one. And meaning that you have a quarter inch seam at the point. You'll have a quarter inch at the point up here so that when you sew the blocks together, you won't be missing your point of And then beam. these are straightened out a little. Exactly. Okay. So let's go back over to the cutting. And put that aside. And we can start doing the trimming. Okay. So now we're going to use this portion of the tool, okay? This is all for trimming. So I'm gonna place this, I'm gonna use my point right here, because this, this is your seam placement here, and your seam placement here. Mm, already mm. marked for you. Already marked, okay? So, and then everything comes down. If you can kind of look, I'm gonna put it out a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. So you can see that where this point is, yep. you're just gonna slide that down Ooh. till it fits. Nice. And wow. if you see those lines that were your seam placements, mm -hmm. they've now disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're gonna trim here and here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're left-handed, there are instructions to be able to do it. You just shift the block a little bit and cut from the other direction. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing at this point is once it's trimmed for the first, now Deb Tucker's mm -hmm. company is called Studio 180. So you flip the unit 180. And then our finished block is four. So our cut block is going to be four and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what's nice is we've got another little doohickey over here that helps us with a guide, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm gonna place my four and a half and four and a half on the sides that I just cut. Ooh, and the point line 
things up. And then this little guy goes right into the V. Mm -hmm. So that you can, that's a secondary checkpoint for Deb Tucker's tools. She always has that built in, which is lovely. So then we're gonna trim. And trim. And here is our four and a half that's inch block, which matches. Nice. What's nice is you can place that one on top of that one, and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. You can grab the other one, and what do you know? They're all same size. So where does this go in the quilt, I'll ask you? This guy, in some of them, right now they're, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. showing where it's at. Mm -hmm. When we look at the, let me grab this, see if I can get back here further. Because as we get through the, the quilts, it will start having you pull in different aspects mm -hmm. oh, and so building kind of, things. Oh, I see. So, so they're sitting out in these points out here. Mm -hmm. oh, they'll these. be they're they'll these. be here. Mm -hmm. They'll be in here. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. cool. So down the road, All they'll right. be sewn into the center of the block Very nice. or the center of the quilt. Great. Right. Right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed part one, month one of Fair Isle. And we will be back next, actually just in a couple weeks probably, with the second version, the second block.